Under the protective canopy of the forest, a curious young girl named Chido made her way through dried leaves and tree roots. It was the rainy season in Zimbabwe, and Chido and her grandmother were searching for mushrooms that were pushing their way out through the dew. The sun-dappled soil below was soft and loamy, and Chido marveled at all the colorful shapes springing from the forest floor. They were small red mushrooms with white polka dots, tan mushrooms with delicate gills, and golden mushrooms opening up like trumpets into the air. Chido lifted each of them to show her grandmother, trusting her knowledge to determine if they were dangerous fungi or tasty treats. Mushrooms had been important to Chido's family for a long time, but on the first day of foraging, Chido had no idea that they would one day save her life. I'm Denise Kumalo, and this is Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, a fairy tale podcast about the real life rebel women who inspire us. On this episode, we'll meet Chido Govera, a mushroom enthusiast and cultivator, activist, and author who's growing the community of mushroom farmers. Chido Govera was born in 1986. She grew up with her mother, grandmother, and younger brother in a small village in Zimbabwe. The land around them was lush and green. But life was difficult for the people of the village. Many of them were living in poverty, and Chido and her family often went without basic necessities. Sometimes they had so little money they couldn't afford food to eat. Chido's mother was sick with a very serious illness called AIDS. Sometimes she would have to leave her family in search of medicine. When she was gone, Chido was left with her uncles, who hurt her and made her feel unsafe. Chido hated being near them, but she also knew her mom desperately needed help. She had to learn to fend for herself. Tragically, Chido's mom never got the medicine she needed and she passed away when Chido was seven. Chido was left to take care of her little brother and her grandmother, who was nearly blind. It was a huge responsibility. Every day before school, Chido woke up at four in the morning to search for firewood, then walked at least a mile to fetch water. Next, she worked in nearby fields, toiling for hours just to get something to eat. Then she would go to a faraway school where she was often late to class. Chido knew her mother wanted her to get an education, but it felt nearly impossible to do all this and take care of her family too. So at age nine, she dropped out of school. When she was 10, Chido was offered a way out. There was a man 30 years older who wanted to marry her. If she agreed, her life would change. She would finally have a roof over her head and food on her plate. She was pressured to accept the proposal, but Chido refused. She didn't want to get married, at least not just for food and a roof over her head. And besides, she needed to provide for her brother and grandmother. So Chido stayed and continued to support her little family however she could. Every little bit of food she was able to gather she shared with her brother and grandmother. Often, Chido's body ached from working so hard, but their love and her grandmother's stories of hope kept her going. It was the only way she knew to survive. Then, when Chido was 11 years old, she heard about a five-day mushroom cultivation program that was being run at a nearby university. She hadn't been to school in a long time, but she was curious about these fascinating fungi. A woman from Chido's village helped her get into the program, and Chido was thrilled. Even though she'd have to leave her family, she knew this was an incredible opportunity, though. Hopefully, the knowledge she gained would be worth the time apart. 
the program was initiated by the Zeri Foundation, a global network that uses local resources to provide for people's basic needs. Zeri worked with local scientists to introduce mushroom farming in Zimbabwe. The program taught participants about the science and art of growing mushrooms, using supplies that were easily accessible to them. They learned how they could support the mushrooms and how the mushrooms could support them too. For example, Chido learned how she could sell them to make a steady income. After a week of training, Chido and four other girls returned to the village. Less than 10 days later, they had their first harvest of edible mushrooms. Everyone wondered if the cultivated mushrooms tasted like the ones from the forest. They each took a bite, noting that they were a little slimy, but also crunchy. Slightly different from the forest mushrooms. They imagined cooking them with herbs and spices, and their mouths began to water. Chido and her friends fried the mushrooms in oil and mixed them with pieces of chicken. The smell of seasoning and hot grease filled the air. Other people from the community were drawn by the delicious smells. And the girls began selling plate after plate of their new dishes. Soon, they had so many orders that Chido and her team couldn't keep up. They sold out again and again. Finally, Chido had enough food for her and her family. And before she knew it, Chido had even earned enough money to send her brother to school. The more she worked with them, the more Chido saw that mushrooms could adapt and thrive in nearly any environment. And she was starting to discover that she could too. When she was 12 years old, Chido got an opportunity to return to the local university to continue learning about mushrooms. Chido was keen to leave the village and return to her studies, but her uncle would not allow her to go. He insisted that Chido pay him for taking care of her grandmother and brother while she was away. Fortunately, Chido's mentor from the university was able to negotiate with her uncle. He guaranteed that Chido would soon earn enough money to pay him for his help. So, Chido and her uncle agreed. Chido would buy herself an education, her family's safety, and her own freedom. Chido worked at the university for four years and then left to pursue her education elsewhere. She dived deeper into the study of mushroom farming, also called fungi culture. For example, she learned about the spent substrate, which is a soil-like material left over from growing mushrooms. The spent substrate has the ability to rebuild soils that have been destroyed by artificial fertilizers or chemicals. It spreads out into the soil as a natural fertilizer, helping other plants to grow and flourish. At the age of 19, it was time for Chido to once again be like the mushrooms, to rebuild and help her community flourish. She began writing a book about her life and called it The Future of Hope. She wanted to inspire others as her grandmother had inspired her. When Chido was 27, she embarked on her biggest endeavor yet, to create a place where everyone could learn how to farm mushrooms and to earn the money and confidence that will allow them to cultivate hope for a new future. After traveling the world and teaching mushroom farming in different countries, Chido started the Future of Hope Foundation in 2013. Through the new organization, Chido reaches out to vulnerable people from communities across Zimbabwe. She is thoughtful about her lessons and adapts the program to match the needs of each group. She teaches the participants how to cultivate mushrooms from waste and start a small vegetable garden. It's a safe space for people to learn, to express themselves, to share their hopes and dreams. And in 2015, Chido adopted several children, 
she finally had the energy and resources to give others the safety and support that she wished she had growing up. She finally had the chance to put down roots. Today, Chido travels the globe, spreading the word about the incredible potential of mycology, the study of fungi. In fact, Chido has personally trained over 8,000 people from around the world. When she's not traveling, she's at home in Zimbabwe, tending to her mushrooms and the communities that depend on them. She loves spending time in the garden. As Chido's reach continues to grow, so does her curiosity. She's always looking for more practical uses for her beloved mushrooms, including their medicinal and soil healing properties. Chido believes that everyone is capable of great things. As she says, I have been able to reclaim myself. This is something that's required for every individual. We are not what happened to us. Whenever she can, Chido makes sure to spend time in the forest, looking and listening, marveling at the polka dotted mushrooms, the guild mushrooms, and the mushrooms that open like trumpets. She plants her feet in the soil, turns her face to the sun, and enjoys the stable life that she's grown for herself. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. This episode was narrated by me, Denise Kumalo. It was produced and directed by Haley Dabkis, with sound design and mixing by Bianca Salinas. The story was written by Stephanie Nieves and edited by Abby Schur. Fact-checking by Joe Radigan, the executive producer, was Joyce Smith. Original theme music was composed and performed by Elektra Bajaki. A special thanks to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Until next time, stay Rebel. Rebel.